Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, everyone. The work at, that I am going to present is Investment in Education and Health in Children by Socioeconomic Status in Uruguay, and what was made with Marisa Bukele. Uruguay is a small country with only 3.3 million inhabitants. Its social protection, education, and health system had an early development in comparison to other Latin American countries. At present, it's part of the group of countries with the lowest levels, levels of inequality in the region. Otherwise, the country has one of the oldest population in Latin America. So a key aspect to achieve a future increase in productivity is to invest in education and health in childhood and youth. There is a major concern with the educational system because of the high rate of school dropout and repetition. Also, there are large differences by socioeconomic level. In the recent year, 73% among the richest quantile complete upper secondary and only 10% for the lowest. On the other hand, previous studies show that the average health outcomes of children are like the ones reported for developed countries. However, the study highlights that the performance is worse for poor children in, term of, in terms of chronic malnutrition, obesity, fine motor, etc. In this study, we analyzed the result of NTA 2013 by says focuses on children under the age of 21. To estimate NTA by socioeconomic status, we classify the population in four sets groups based on the education of the head of the household. Each sex group includes population living in household where the head has these ranges of education, less than nine years of schooling, nine to 11, 12 to 15, and 16 or more. To estimate population by sex, we use the proportion of sex groups in each age in the household survey for the same year. This table shows that the share of cess groups in the population decreased with cess. Let's start with a quick look of the overall result of labor income and consumption by cess. These are the per capita age profile as a percentage of the average labor income for ages 30 to 49. The average individual is the black dotted line as expected, labor income and consumption increases with cess, and the gap is higher for the former. On average, consumption of children under 21 represents 54% of average labor income. Consequently, the life cycle deficit rises with cess at childhood and all ages, but surplus is more pronounced as sex increases at working ages. That suggests a pressure on the resources generated by the medium, high, and high groups. On average, the stage of surplus covers 32 years ages. The length of surplus is similar for all sex groups, but the age of entry and exit to the surplus stage increases with sex. We are interested in the first stage of the life cycle deficit, that is in childhood and youth. Previous work for Uruguay using NTA indicate that pre private transfers play a major role in the support of child, children and young, and young. In this study, we interpret that for each ch child says group, these private transfers come from the working age people of the same sex. Bearing this in mind, we calculated the ratio between the deficit of children and young and the surplus of working ages for each cess group. We find that children and young people of the low cess require 2.6 times more resources than the ones generated by the working ages of the same group. This ratio is one for the high group. This result highlights that the role of public and private transfer is not the same for all groups. Indeed, in this table, we report the part of the life cycle deficit and consumption that is financed with public transfers. 
only 13% of the LCD in the first stage and 10% of the consumption. However, there is an important difference between cess group. Meanwhile, 40% of the LCD of the low cess is supported by public transfers, medium high and high cess are net contributors. This result highlights the important role of other reallocation channels that support children, which we can ascribe to direct use of families' resources. To analyze differences by cess, we present the, component of, the components of total consumption for the low and high cess groups. The higher the cess, the higher consumption and all its components. Most of cess differences in spending are explaining by the gap in the rest of, uh, of uh, uh, private consumption, sorry, that is non-investment items. But part of the differences come from the gap in human capital investment. To better understand consumption gaps, we observe which are the components component that increase their participation when the socioeconomic level increase. The results suggest the presence of a consumption or investment pattern when passing from one sales group to another. Families' reaction to the first step of socioeconomic improvements seems to be a very important rise of consumption per se, with a relative low increases of human capital investment. Further improvement lead to more intense responses in terms of human capital, particularly allocating resources to education. Only when reaching the highest cess group, investment in health gains importance. Expenditure in education and health represent the effort on human capital investment on children made by the society. It takes account for 38% of total consumption of population under age 21. In the case of education, it represents 28%. The per capita age profile respond to differences in educational level cost and in age pattern of school dropout and repetition. Besides, the most noticeable pattern is that at all ages, education increases with cess. Besides, the maximum investment happen at ages 12 to 14 for the low, medium low, and medium high cess, but at ages 15 to 17 for the high cess. To explore the sources of cess differences, we consider for each group the attendance rate, the per student spending, that is the public and private education age profile, and the share of private consumption, including fees, material, etc. For children are under age 15, given the almost universal coverage, the attendance rate gap between groups is not so important. The differences in per student investment come from the incident of private expenditure. As this increase, private investment rises while public investment declines. For children at ages 15 to 17, private investment play a role and there is a strong effect of the differences in dropout. Attendance rate declines for the lowest test while it remains stable for the highest test. Cess gap investment in education increases once again at ages 18 to 20. Differences in attendance rate, rate play an important role. On the contrary, the distance in spending per, per student declines as a result of two opposite forces. On one hand, overage is more intense in low cess, which makes that investment gap widens because high cess attend more expensive expensive levels, levels of education. On the other hand, more than 95% of enrolled persons who are undertaking tertiary education use public services, so the public transfers among per student does not vary between CES. It is noticeable that the sign of public education gap changes. Per student public investment for low CES more than doubles high CES before age 18. But at ages 18 to 20, high sales public investment more than doubles low sales. Meanwhile, 
private investment is still much higher for the high than low CES. As a result, the sources of CES differences <clears throat> may respond to different patterns in dropout and per student investment, in particular private investment. Regarding health consumption, it takes account for 10% of per capita consumption of children under age 21. Figures show that health investment increases by CES for all the three age ranges considered. The difference in health expenditure by CES may arise from three factors. One of them is coverage. In our estimation, coverage means to have the entitlement to use a healthcare institution. The Uruguayan healthcare provision is offered by a public healthcare network and private institution. Most of the population is covered through a public program, program a public insurance that funds healthcare provision in public and private institutions. There is also specific healthcare uh, provision to the police and military officers. And those who are not covered by any program may choose private institution and pay the fees or premiums, or may use public healthcare network without charge. As a result of the whole system, the healthcare system seeks to ensure the coverage of all the population, which is successfully achieved. So there is a very low percentage of population that declare not to be entitled. Thus, coverage does not appear as the factor that explains differences in investment by sex. A second cause of the health gaps may be the difference in public transfers. This would come from difference, differences in the incidence of the coverage type within each sex. But the incidence of public provision decreases with sex. Thus, healthcare public transfer do not explain the set gap. On the contrary, public transfers decreases with sales. <clears throat> Third cause of sales gaps are private expenses that include fees, premiums, copayment, pharmacy spending, etc. These expenses increase by sales. On average, for children under age 21, these expenses of the high sales group are four times those of the low sales group, and this gap is similar for all ages. As a result, the main source of sales differences is private expenditure. To finish, we are interested in highlighting some results. The positive relation of human capital investment in children and sex is partially related with coverage. <coughs> in, the case of in the case of education, sorry, school dropout and repetition are captured in lower amounts of investments. In the case of healthcare, coverage is almost universal and do not play an important role in sales gaps. A major role to explain this gap must be considered to private investment. This is consistent with the role of public transfer mentioned. The medium high and high groups generated a surplus of resources that is allocated to the other groups through public channels. This, uh, the question, sorry, that remains is whether the quality of public and pa private human capital investment is the same. We are aware that the gap could underestimate the actual differences if different types of coverage means different quality services. So, thank you very much.